Hey, it's Jason, and this is my 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan. And uh, here's kind of a look at what we're going to be doing today. This is the final product of the sub installed. And uh, basically, I'm going to do a walkthrough and show you the process of how I got to this point and um, installing the amp and running the wires throughout the car and, uh, you know, how I hooked everything up. I did, I recorded some videos for every one of those different sections. Uh, so you'll actually see this part of the video at the end, and this is just kind of a voiceover you know for the video and I'll explain exactly how I screwed this down and how I added some sound dampening and you know how I did different aspects of installing this um, in the Tiguan uh, the end result is amazing it was a lot of bass and I actually didn't even film it but there's even a bass knob that it hooks up to the the LC uh, 2 part so um, but yeah enjoy this video and uh, here let's get to it uh, something really simple and very important um, you know, I just used, like I said, the four gauge, I did an O-ring, and I completely took this bolt off and out and put this in the middle of it here, and then squeezed it tight, you know, back down. Um, you need to be fused, you, typically less than about 12 inches away from the battery is safe, because theoretically if any of this wire got a short in it against metal, it would pop the fuse here first, but this, so this area is real important to be short as possible because it... Theoretically, it's not protected. Um, and in an engine bay, this should probably be wire loom. I didn't get around to doing it yet. Um, just a simple blade fuse. It's very easy to replace. Um, uh, if you if you get a if you get a pop a fuse, but you know, on a very basic system like this, you should never pop a fuse. And that came through the firewall. Um, there's a little grommet. Right where a clutch would be on a on a you know a stick shift car, there's a big grommet in the wall there that pops out real simple, um, and you just push this wire, drill drill a little hole in the middle of that grommet and push this wire through, and it's a waterproof, soundproof seal, um, and it's just I I from the inside just push a coat hanger up into here, and then this is done, and I pull my long wire all the way through the firewall and into the car. Or you could go opposite and pull it this way into here, whatever you want. So, like I was saying, up there by where the clutch is, behind some of this padding, is this grommet. I guess where a third pedal would go. And uh, like I did, I said, I just drilled a hole in it and pressed the end of the wire through it. And that made a nice tight fit. And this just ran behind here and down inside here like so. Pretty simple, actually. Now in order to do the power wire, you're gonna need to just pop these up. And without removing the seats, you know, this doesn't come up very far. But what you can do is you can use a coat hanger or that, you know, they actually have special tools made for this. And you could push it through and it will just come out over here somewhere and then you can pull your wire through. But as you can see, these are just push in clips, very simple to do. And then the wire, there's plenty of room for the wire down in there. To run typically you don't have to take this piece out because this, this is on top of it and then you can fish it through there with the same tool well there's not very much to this audio control this lc2i this basically is going to take your high um, powered signals like from your speakers your left right front and rear and I grabbed mine right at the radio or the amplifier it's external on the Volkswagens and those four wires you need to get them back to the back here and then they go into here pretty simple and then from there there's like AccuBase your gains and your base knob and stuff and then your then you have your out and your pass through and stuff for RCAs so it's a really simple piece they're usually no more than $125 even 100 bucks on eBay sometimes brand new and they're very reliable so buying one used is usually not you know you'll be all right now something I wasn't able to film and I apologize for that. Uh, I forgot to do it and it was a little more technical, but it's not hard. So this is basically the brains of this radio. And this takes any old fashioned radio key. They make specific ones, but I just used some old Kenwood ones from the 90s and stuck them in here. And this whole prop thing slides out like an old DIN radio. Well, luckily, even for the 22 Tiguans, the speaker outputs are the same as they've always been. So any aftermarket wiring harness you've ever bought where you have your purple and your purple with the stripe and your green and your green with the stripe and your gray with the stripe, 
and so on those are all color coordinated for uh, left and right and front and rear and they haven't changed so what I did was I unplugged this thing completely and just took it out and the wires come out to about here and I laid down my soldering mat here and I actually just stripped the wire so there was an exposed little piece of wire on it and then like T tapped into it and soldered it to it and then wrapped some tape around it and made my wiring harness that way they do sell some piggyback systems where you unplug that from the back of this unit and it then it comes with like a like a set of wires that just hang off of it and then it plugs in so it's like a it's like a t-tap wire harness i guess you might call it um for feeding external amplifier so something to think about i'm sorry i didn't film that but um that is literally the most technical part of this whole build and it's really not that hard since the wire are just so simple um and those just need to be any size speaker wires i mean i i used the, came with an old set of six by nines you know and just ran them back to the the lc1 down through the side channel i just kind of pushed them in it was real easy on this side i've used like a drywall screw to find out where these holes were going to be at um and then i hand screwed in some the nicer screws that came with the amp and this one's already mounted up with some really short little stainless screws and then on the back side like i said i ground the little points off of them but to mount this and this and to, to find these holes i actually had that whole entire piece out on my workbench before i had any of these wires attached uh, to the crossover that let me make them nice and level and very easy to screw in not sliding down every time well, here's the amp rack all done. Now, you, this amp, I guess you could fit a little bit of bigger one in here, but not much more because you need room for hookups. But don't forget that this whole entire piece is removable. So once I marked out where I was going to put everything, I actually did the rest outside of the car. And um, I used some screws, some self-tapping screws and then where they popped through i grinded the heads off so that you can't even feel them on the back side um this is where i got my signal um sorry it's so loud where i got my four uh channels from the factory head unit um they feed into one side and then it goes to the out this is a low pass crossover if you don't have one built into your amp i chose 125 hertz or whatever it is uh, 12 dB roll off and then that goes in you know a little short jumper into the Audison amp and that's just a monoblock sub amp um, like I said I overkilled the wire I could have used 8 gauge but I, I figured maybe in the future I might upgrade to more amps and then uh, the ground wire is underneath this foot so I actually unbolted this this side of the seats over here over here and here lifted this up and sanded a little bit underneath there and then just pushed all the wire underneath there. I've had zero engine noise, but it's coming through the subs. So I doubt I'd hear it anyways. Um, and then obviously the four gauge couldn't plug into the, the, the amp, so I had to convert it, you know. Right now it's just a simple soldered tap. Um, eventually I'll do a power distribution block and everything. But you know, this is actually real simple. Like I said, this comes out real easy and that helps a lot. So let me show you the sub box all done in the back. And while, while I had a chance, I took the sub out and just added a little bit of sound ending to the floors. I didn't try to go in those walls or anything. That's all too complicated to take apart. Um, but with the floor and that, you know, I'll show you in the next step, you know, putting that little foam down underneath it. This There was zero rattles back here. And there's the wire coming in for the sub. And as you can see, the wall's all installed um, with the, the amp on the other side, so no screws are sticking through. So here's the kicker box, and it, the wire's plugged into it. Um, I can change the phase on the amplifier or the, or the crossover, so that's not as important, although I do have it hooked up positive, negative. I mean, it's a little short wire. Um, what this box is, it's uh, the kicker 12 inch, um, two ohms, so the amp bridges down uh this is this is actually the sub and then these are called passive radiators uh, these are non-powered but 
you know, theoretically it takes the energy from this and helps just move more air on the other side. I, I kind of believe in it, I like it. It's kind of old school, so, um, but the box, you know, it, it sounds amazing. So this is the bottom of the trunk uh, board, uh, you know, that the amps mounted to, I mean the sub box mounted to. In hindsight, what I probably should have done was put a little washer on the head of these screws. Because as I was screwing them in, it, they pulled the head through a little bit. It's still super tight, I can't move it, but, you know, something to consider um, in the future when you're installing this too, if you do it this way. And then this just a uh, fireproof sound, sound deadening mat that I laid in here um, just for uh, rattles. I mean, it's almost like carpet padding, but this is actually met for sound deadening so that's just all tucked up underneath here and this this just lays down on top of it and pushed into place all right let me show you the here's the final product here's the sub box all screwed down so what i did was as i was showing you this ends up being nice and tight up against these and this is nice and secure down here. What I did was I put the long screws all the way through the removable floorboard and the cargo mat and into the kicker box. Um, I just used four uh, self-tapping uh, two and a half inch long screws. Obviously when the screws went through into the sub box, I made sure it was in this, in this foot area right here so I didn't screw into one of the subs because they are literally that far in there.